now that we've started to form a pretty solid foundation into what the dynamic focus structure means, we're going to do some activities. The first thing we're going to do is present something that we personally have worked on, that we're really familiar with, that we're passionate about, and where we have enough background knowledge where we can apply the dynamic focus structure without having to think about it too much. We're going to be able to make the contract with the audience. And we're also going to be able to split the presentation into threes and be comfortable with each stage. I've chosen to present something that I personally worked on called Visions of Notre Dame. This book is filled with over 200 designs that people created for their visions of what Notre Dame could be after the fire of 2019. I'm going to focus on the circumstances that led up to the creation of this book. I'm going to focus on the outstanding effort and passion that people put into the designs. And then for the last section, I'm going to pretend I'm pitching this book to a bookstore or to a museum shop. And I'm going to explain why it would make a great addition to their collection. So now that I know what the three topics are going to be, I'm going to make sure my hook, my contract at the beginning is strong enough to bring the listener in. And remember, my practice audience is a bookstore or somebody that I want to buy the book and offer it to their customers. Do you remember where you were when you learned that Notre Dame Cathedral was burning down? I definitely remember. And as somebody that loves architecture and went to architecture school, it really hit me deep. And it hit millions of other people around the world really close to home because it was so iconic. It was more than just a building. It was, it was a piece of culture. It was a piece of history. After that happened, me and my team, we tried to think of a way of how we could honor its legacy, how we could explore what would come next, and how it could be something that architects could participate in a broader discussion that maybe we don't often get to participate. Well, I believe we did all of those things and we're here today to talk about how we can have what we did as part of your collection. This is Visions of Notre Dame. After the fire, we held a design competition with over 226 architects, designers, kids, all the way to old people participating. All of their designs went into this beautiful book. It's filled with hundreds of images, hundreds of visions of Notre Dame, of what people imagine could happen to the beautiful cathedral when it's reconstructed, hopefully in just a few years. As you can see, hundreds of people put their many hours and their passion into creating designs that are memorable, are modern or historical, some maybe are a little funny, but they all reflect what Notre Dame meant to each person. After the design competition was held and the winner was announced, we put them together in this book to really honor their work, honor the competition, and really on a bigger scale, honor the legacy of Notre Dame itself. Now, this book is for sale, and we're bringing it here today because we believe that your store, your museum, well, we love it. We know that other, other, we know that other people interested in architecture love it, and we think this book would be a perfect addition to your collection simply because it was made by that architecture community. It was made by people that love architecture and that are passionate about history and design. And those are the exact type of people that are coming in to your store, to your museum. We think it would be a natural addition to your shelves, and we'd like to talk to you a little bit more about it. Okay, so that was a first pass. Wasn't perfect, but you know what? I think that's the point. It's to show you that even if you stumble a little bit, like I did with a few words there, you have to just take a pause and keep going. You're never going to be a perfect presenter. What is required is that you stay on track, 
you get back to the points that you were trying to talk about or that you promised to talk about and that you end on the point that is most important. In my case, I tried to wrap it all together to explain why the architecture and design community would love to see this book on their shelves. And then I left the door open for future questions that they may have at the end. As with all things, you need to practice. So in order to do that, I'm gonna do this again. Do you remember where you were when you saw that Notre Dame had burned down? Me, along with millions of other people, watched as something that was historical, beautiful, and an amazing piece of architecture was nearly burnt to the ground. After that happened, me and my team, we started to think about what we could do to honor its legacy, but also look forward to the future. And that's what we tried to do with this book, The Visions of Notre Dame. It's something that was born out of a design competition that we held where over 200 designers participated and submitted their visions for Notre Dame. All of those designs were put into this book. It is hundreds, if not thousands of hours of architects and designers from kids to elderly put their passion and put their interest to use to create what they imagine the future of Notre Dame to be. As you can see, they put a lot of work into it. The passion that went into creating this book and of course the designs in it is something that we believe would be an amazing addition to your store, to your shelves, your museum, simply because the design community, the architecture community, we already love your store. We already go to your museum. And that's the same community that made this book. I think, we think, that your customers would love to see this and it would be a natural and profitable addition to your store. I think with a little bit more practice, I could squash the last few bugs, slow myself down again, and choose those specific words that might help me bring it together. I think its strengths were that it told the story. I tried to show as many designs as possible. I think the weakness was probably the closing. I think I could have ended on a stronger note and invited them to ask me questions and maybe make a stronger pitch at the end. Now it's your turn to practice. Find something that you love, that you've worked on, that you're passionate about, and practice presenting it. Make sure you define your audience. That way you can focus your words a little bit more and you can try to find the strongest conclusion possible for who you're talking to.